Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. First of all, it has been a long journey, let me tell you. Oh my gosh. I made pottery mugs like this for Insika. Anyway, let me go ahead and tell you what spurred this on. I started making bananas and bananas, they didn't necessarily symbolize a penis, but they symbolized all things like juicy and delicious. And so I enjoyed making these little tiny, tiny bananas out of ceramics. And then once I made those, I was like, I want to photograph them for my mug collection that I had right before I went to the ceramics conference. And so I photographed them and it still didn't look right. Like I was trying to take pictures of it on my ear and it just didn't seem like the what I wanted it to be. And then my husband came home and he was like, hey, let's go outside and I'll help you take photos. And I was like, okay. So we went outside and I put the bananas on my ear and I just kind of pulled my hair back so that you could see the bananas. And then he started, he just was like playing around, started kissing my neck and then his mouth close to my ear. And it actually turned out to be very beautiful photos. And I'm super excited for them because they were very, not like they were erotic in a way like somewhat erotic but i thought it was so funny you know like it's like bananas like come on like like this is bananas you know and like nothing very serious but then i posted them online just as a joke because i thought they were funny and people were like upset i lost followers on instagram i lost followers on facebook and I was just kind of like confused. This is not supposed to be serious. Someone even said like, what are you insinuating? Like, what are you trying to say? Unfollow. And I was like, like, <laughs> like what the heck? Like, it's not that serious. It's just bananas, you know? And then one person that I, like I know of her, but I don't know her personally. Um, she was just like, this makes me uncomfortable. Your art makes me uncomfortable. And that really hurt me like a lot. And I was more so angry at myself for feeling hurt about her opinion. And I started thinking about the South, you know? I started thinking like, well, did she feel uncomfortable because I'm black and my partner is white and they were like licking my ear. But she's also friends with me on Facebook so I was like, well, she knows I'm with Simon. So that can't be it. I just like thought about it more and more and I couldn't figure it out until I realized she has a situation with herself that she's not telling people and that a couple of us know about. And because that's her privacy, I'm not going to say anything about it, but I know. I know what's going on with you. Anyway, but then it had me thinking about the way people interpret art in the way that it has nothing to do with me. Like it has nothing to do with the person that created the art. And the more and more I thought about that, the more it made me realize that a lot of times we carry burdens of other people for no reason. It's like their problem. It's like their junk. And part of me just kind of feels like, hey, what if I were to create the things that I made for the university, but on pottery and show it to people at Insika. So retracing my steps back, I was in a rut for the last couple of months and I didn't know why. Um, and then it started becoming apparent that the rut I was in was because I wasn't being authentic to some something inside of me that was wanting to come out. and. I felt like I was, I kept hitting these barriers, like the kiln messed up and all sorts of different things happened. And so I was just in a sad, dark place for a while. Um, but then it got to the point where I was just kind of like, I have got to like wake up, like this is our income for the family and things need to like, I need to get the ball rolling. But I just couldn't like get past making <laughs> like I don't know like there was just something inside of myself that was like make the penis and I was just like no I don't want to make that and 
And so I kind of fought it a little bit until I had an art show um, at my university that I graduated from, Francis Marion University. For some reason, it just kept bugging me to make them. And I was like, I'm not making them for this art show. I'm not making them for this art show. And I ended up making them for the art show. Um, they turned out very beautiful. The whole space looked gorgeous. Um, everything kind of worked from within myself and everything just kind of flowed out very beautifully. And I'm very thankful for that show. Um, and it gave me the courage to press forward but also it made me even more nervous. I was so neurotic even putting up the show and I was talking to my friend about it. I was talking to my um, professor of ceramics about it. I was talking to a lot of people about like why <laughs> I was doing this. And of course they didn't know why I was doing it either, but I felt so vulnerable and just so nervous and so much anxiety around making it because I didn't want it to become my identity. And I knew it wasn't my identity. I wasn't going to become the penis mug person, you know? Um, but I knew that it needed to come out for some reason. I don't know. It's like, it's like, it was building up the last couple of months, especially like uh, my pottery started having apples on there. And I felt like the apples kind of symbolized like Garden of Eden, like, um, intelligence and things like that and I just enjoyed painting apples and then it stepped into this realm of I don't know it's less about the sex of it like the 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 shock value of it and it was more about the beauty of it the beauty of the form and the beauty of um things that can happen to it when it's excited. <laughs> so, um, so I think with me, I think that's where I came from a place of art. I'm, I came from a place of just pure honesty and vulnerability in terms of, I think they're beautiful. Um, and I think they're lovely and I just wanted to show them and no, my partner did not model for them. So Insika is the national, hold on. Insika is the National Council on Education for the Ceramic Arts. And it is a conference that happens every year. And the conference travels throughout the United States. And this year, my partner, hubby, husband, and I got to go. And I was super excited to go. Um, we found out that we were going to go because Art Fields, the organization that my husband works for, is building studios and it's super exciting. So they're building a couple studios and they're also going to build a soda kiln. And so I am so excited about this soda kiln and I'm excited that we got to go to the conference and my husband manned the booth for the whole week and it was very overwhelming and exciting. I got very, very nervous about it. <laughs> and I talked to Simon about it and he was like, well, usually if you feel that way about something, then that means that you should pursue it. And so I wanted to explain why I was making these things. And so I made a zine. And this zine, I printed out like over a hundred copies on my home printer, folded the zine up because it opens up like this. And I folded the zine and I placed all 100 of the zines in the mug. And then we drove to Richmond and I put the zines in the mug cell. <laughs> so it was interesting though. There was a Q, there's a QR code on the back of the zine and it'll take you to my website. So if you were at the cup cell, and let me explain what the cup cell is. Okay, so I decided to like chain vantage points. Let me tell you what the mug cell is. It's an Insika fund for artistic development designed to provide opportunities for artistic growth through scholarships, residencies, and programs. And so you deliver your mugs that Wednesday and Thursday, and the mugs sit on tables 
in this room and so it's like hundreds and hundreds of mugs that are just sitting on a table they will go on sale friday at 8 o'clock a.m people literally line up early in the morning to get mugs and it's super exciting so my reasoning for this whole thing was because i felt like it is it was a shock value piece like i know that and i know that people probably looked at the mug and thought things like oh why would she do that oh she did that for attention which is fine but my intention was to make myself very uncomfortable and make myself realize it's not a big deal people are going to judge you either way no matter what and i just need to be comfortable with myself and with what i believe so i'm glad that i did it i'm glad that i placed the mugs there so i put the mug at the sale and throughout the whole week people were coming up to me um i i have like around 36,000 followers on instagram and i've had a lot of followers for several years um so people do recognize me at Insika, and it does make me nervous um just only because I'm very like scattered brain and ADD. And so, and I work alone in, a, in my house. So I get very like in my head. So it's very overwhelming to be around people. Um, but I do enjoy talking to people and I enjoy talking about like philosophical things. Um, so for me, it was such a treat to just meet people and they'll say, you made the penis mug. And then I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, well, did you read the zine? Like, and they will be like, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. And I was like, yeah, it was just a, a way for me to let go of my expectations of what people expected of me. And it was amazing. It was a great experience. Um, it was more than what I bargained for at times. Oh, and the pop stars thing. I did a, a mug pop up with a couple of potters and it was at a brewery. And it was so cool because it was almost like a pub crawl. So you, um, they had this really cool, I'll put it up here, but it was this really cool postcard that you could pick up and it showed a map of where all the pop up, like the clay pop-ups were and you could go there and like go see a pop-up and my friends Shauna and um, Emily came and they actually stood there the whole time with their phones and we did like a light show this is amazing <laughs> We were like, whoa! So it was like this rave happening while we were like, I was trying to sell. And I was gorgeous. I was already like overwhelmed from like in Sika anyway. So I was just like letting them just do their thing. And it was so fun. <laughs> I had such a great time. So I'm good to go now. You don't have to worry about me making like penis mugs every day. <laughs> So, but if you are interested in buying one, I have one left and it's on my site. I'm going to put it on my site and um, you can take a look at it. Um, I thought about putting, I might put a disclaimer on the picture so you guys won't demonetize me or be like, Tiffany, why are you making this? Like, you're a heathen, you're a whore. Anyway, have a wonderful day. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Um, also, have a really cool announcement like Thursday. I'm hoping Thursday. Okay, bye. So you go to this conference and in the conference they have <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they have lectures going all day when you walk down to the ex exhibitor hall, oops, sorry, sorry. So the exhibitor hall, the one side is the resource table where they have colleges, universities, play centers, like residencies, they like organization working with clay and they're looking for more clay people to come to their organization or school or whatever. And that's where Art Fields was. Simon had a booth there for Art Fields. So that's where he, was the whole day and it was like 
so many people coming up and talking to him, which was amazing. They are fields. Fields. Let's do the residency. Um, and then the, on the other side, you had the exhibitor hall, and that was vendors from all over the United States, companies like Amico and Speedball and Blick Art Materials and oh, just so many different companies there. And they were basically just pimping out there what they had to offer for ceramic artists. Over 4,000 people came to Nsika. It was crazy cool. And it was great. So you had the resource table at Exhibitor Hall and then in front of all that, there was these two galleries and in those galleries, they were like selling artwork from different artists. You also had an area of Nsika where they had uh, emerging artists. And then there was a cool area that was like STEM that focused more on the science of clay, the science of glazing, the science of firing, and people did a lot of research, testing research, and that you could walk up to them and talk to them about scientific things. And then on the other side of the space, there was this really cool area where you can make rocket kilns, which is like these makeshift kilns. You take old ceramic electric kilns and you convert them into wood fire or salt fire or soda fire kilns. It was super cool. And then on the other side too was like a clay Olympics thing where everyone was like throwing all at the same time. Like, and it was like a contest super cool so that was all happening all at the same time with 4,000 people for three days wild it's such a wonderful experience and i'm glad that i got to go and i'm just glad that i got to experience just being there meeting so many wonderful people there's so many things i've learned but i'm also thankful for the opportunity to I don't know. We just had a really freaking cool time. I also had some mugs in a gallery show and that was super fun. There were like some of those like penis mugs in there too. And two mugs sold. Yay. <laughs> so that was exciting. But the whole, the whole trip was very, very exciting.